Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. This module is on configuring Windows Firewall. I'm James Messer, and in this video, we're going to focus on what we'll need to know for our 7680 certification exam. And Windows Firewall is pretty extensive. We need to be able to configure rules for multiple profiles, allowing or denying an application to be used in our Windows 7 operating system, network profile specific rules, configuring notifications and configuring authenticated exceptions in the Windows 7 Windows Firewall. One of the things that we are always faced with when we're dealing with security on a network is protecting our machine from the bad guys. And to be able to do that, we use these things called firewalls. The name, of course, comes from the device that's used to actually separate rooms from each other in case there's a fire. The firewall is there to prevent that fire from getting into the other room. What's normally happening is our client is out here on the network, and it's communicating back and forth, perhaps to a web server somewhere out on the big bad internet. And because we have already made this connection out there to the web server, our Windows firewall is stateful. It recognizes that we've made a request out to that web server, and it knows that if it receives a response back from that web server, it will allow that to flow back into the client machine into the Windows 7 operating system. Now at the same time, if there is a bad guy out there on the internet who's trying to send information into our machine, it's not going to allow that. It knows that there was no connection ever made out to that third party device, and it looks through its list and says, I have no rule in the firewall that would simply allow a third party machine somewhere on the internet to connect back through to the client. And so it stops it right there at the firewall. It never makes it to the actual operating system or the client machine. And whether this is a stateful firewall that is an external device that you might have built into one of the routers or wireless access points you have at home, or it might be the built-in Windows 7 operating system Windows firewall that you have on your machine, they all work in a very, very similar way in this functional method. It's going to prevent the bad guys from just sending information into your computer, but still allow the good traffic to flow perfectly normally across the network. Work. One really nice thing about the Windows Firewall is that it's integrated into the operating system. And this, this allows us a different perspective of what's going on. Because it's on the operating system, it knows exactly what applications are able to communicate out to the internet or through the network connection, and which applications are not allowed access. Because it's on the operating system, it knows exactly what op applications are in use. So it makes it very, very powerful to have this on a single operating system machine. You can access the Windows Firewall from the control panel. There is an option inside of there for the Windows Firewall. And it going, it's going to pop up this window that we have that talks about turning on and off different configurations of the firewall. There's also another firewall. Really, it's the same firewall with many, many additional features built into it called the Windows Firewall with advanced security. And the way that you would access that is when you go into the Windows Firewall settings, there's one option here that says Advanced Settings. And that gives you access to an entirely different set of parameters for configuring a firewall. There's a lot of detail in the Windows Firewall with advanced security that you just don't get when you're in the normal Windows Firewall front end. So it's a little more complex to set up, but it gives you a lot more control of the type of traffic and exactly what's being transferred through your system. And it's important that you understand the differences between these two. So let's look at the Windows Firewall. Then we'll also look at the Windows Firewall with advanced security so you can see what the real differences are between all of these. The Windows Firewall gives you a fundamental front end for applying rules into your operating system configuration so that you can allow or disallow certain applications to flow. These are a list, for instance, of the allowed programs in the Windows Firewall. You can see it's very easy to set up. You can allow or disallow certain programs and features to be able to communicate through the network. You can add other programs to this. It can be for different types of networks that you're connecting to. We'll look at all of those parameters when we dive into it. Notice it's based on applications. There's not a lot of detail here. If you would like to allow file and printer sharing, you can click to allow it or not click to disallow it. If you want to allow media center extenders to transfer and process through this particular network, you can allow or disallow that. There's not a lot of configuration options within that. You either turn it on or you turn it off. There's also no scope here. So you, you can't really specify 
just outgoing traffic or just incoming traffic. Really, all traffic applies here. I can't separate it out. There's no visibility into that. When we look at the Windows Firewall with the advanced setting configurations, we're going to look at a whole different set of parameters. But in the basic Windows Firewall front end, you really don't have a lot of control over the direction and scope associated with that traffic as it goes in and out. There's also no connection security rules. And this will become important to look at because very often we're setting up tunneled connections across encrypted links through VPN type connections. And this firewall doesn't apply to those. So we also want to look at some other options when we get into the advanced settings for that. Let's dive into the Windows Firewall. Let me give you a quick tour of that so you know exactly the capabilities that come with the built-in Windows Firewall functionality. Let's start up the Windows Firewall and look at these basic configuration settings. I'm going to go to my Start menu and choose Control Panel. And if I go all the way to the bottom, because I'm viewing this with the large icons in the Control Panel, is the Windows Firewall. And here's our Windows Firewall settings. You can see this main screen tells us the status of the Windows Firewall. And here are the different network profiles that I've got set up, a home or work private network. It's connected. The state is on, the incoming connections, the active home or work private networks, and the notification states are listed. And I've also got this option here for public networks. What's nice about this is if you're on a laptop computer and you go from place to place, when you're inside your trusted network, your home network or your office network, you'll have a completely different set of firewall configurations than if you're sitting, for instance, in a coffee shop somewhere. You don't want people to have have the same access to your machine in a coffee shop as you have in a trusted environment like your office or your home. So having these separate network profiles allow us not only to have different network settings for each of those types of scenarios, but we can also have different Windows firewall settings for those as well. On the left-hand menu, we have a lot of control here on what programs or features we can allow, notification settings, turning the firewall on and off. And then we've got restore defaults in case nothing is working. You want to go back to the way it always started with. And then the advanced settings, which we're going to look at in just a moment. Let's look at the allow a program or feature through the Windows firewall. And here is a list of all of the programs and features allowed to us. Now you can see that the options that we have are to allow the change of settings. And you can see now it's enabled and disabled, and I can allow or disallow those. With any of these, I can get more detail. So if I would like to allow remote assistance, I can click Details, and it tells me what that is associated with. So sometimes you don't know exactly what some of these things mean. You'll see routing and remote access. You want to know what that's referring to. Oh, it's referring to incoming VPN and remote access service connection. So we've got all of these different remote access properties, and they're all built into that one rule. If you'd like to add another program into here, we'll simply choose Allow Another Program. And you've got some basic configuration and Windows settings that you can do. We could also browse for another program on our network. And we can add our other applications into this mix. So it gives us a way to also add these pieces in here and modify the Windows Firewall to work best with the applications that we like to use. As you're using your computer and having applications start up that are going to need access back in, you'll often see a message pop up from Windows Firewall saying, this application needs to allow access from the outside. Do you want to turn that on or not? Generally, when you're communicating outbound and outbound only, and there's no expectation that a third party would be initiating a session with you, normally we don't have a notification of that. But you can change these settings under the Change Notification Settings option. You can turn on Windows Firewall on your home or work private network location. I can block all incoming connections, including those in the list of allowed programs. And of course, I can note, be notified when Windows Firewall blocks a new program. And if you want to turn everything off, you can turn it off right there. Maybe if you're in a public network, you might want to turn on a complete exception so that nothing inbound can come to your machine. That's exactly where you would turn on those settings for the customization. And of course, you have the option within these views to turn off Windows Firewall as well. You can see in both of these, it says that really is not recommended. Windows Firewall Firewall is a very smart firewall, and it knows the applications that you're using. It would be a very, very rare occasion if an application was not able to communicate 
properly over the network because of Windows Firewall. And since it's really important that we have this built-in security and protection in Windows Firewall, the most adv advised thing to do is just not turn it off ever unless there's a very, very, very specific reason for you to have that disabled inside of your computer. Otherwise, leave it turned on and set the proper exceptions for just the applications that you need to communicate through that firewall. Windows Firewall with advanced security takes this to a completely different level. It gives us a lot more control over these rules and allows us to build a lot of customization into the Windows Firewall. First, we can have rules that are inbound and other rules that are outbound rules. This gives us a lot more control over that basic Windows Firewall front end that we were looking at earlier. We can also provide connection security rules. We're going to dive into those. So if we're setting up VPN type connections, we can apply some extra settings into those. We also have a lot of granularity. You could set up a program, a port number, a set of predefined services. A lot of customization goes into a lot of these security rules when you're working in the Windows Firewall with advanced security options. There's also a way to provide custom views based on a program, a protocol port, the scope, an action, and a profile. Let's step through each one of these configuration settings to give you a feel for what you would be able to see if you were working with the Windows Firewall with the advanced security. We would access that Windows Firewall with the advanced settings right here. Click Advanced Settings. And now we've got our Windows Firewall with advanced security. And as you can see, this view is a lot more administrative. We have a lot more functionality and a lot more options that we can choose from. We have an overview right in the middle that shows us the domain profile, the private profile, a public profile. And those firewall properties associated with those profiles allow us to set different settings depending on how we're plugged into the network. Notice that we also have settings for IPsec. If we're setting up these IPsec private encrypted connections to another device, we can also change the type of traffic and how much we would like to pass through those connections. Again, this advanced security gives us a lot more functionality. And that's a very good example of how we can take advantage of that. We can also, if we scroll down a little bit more, see how our connection security rules are set up if we need to authenticate communication between computers. There's an option in here to view and create firewall rules. And then at the very bottom, we can view the current firewall and IPsec policy and activity. So again, this centralized view allows us to go right to particular tasks. Of course, we could get to a number of those just by choosing the option on the left-hand menu as well. So it depends on how you like to work. You can go right to the middle, find the task you want, and go right there. Or if you know exactly what you're looking for, go right to the menu on the left-hand side and attack it that way. If we were to look at some of these rules in our, in our firewall, let's look at our inbound rules. These are the rules that are in here by default on my Windows 7 workstation. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Look at all these rules that are added for inbound rules, some that are enabled and some that are not. The disabled rules are sim simply say they're not enabled and they're gray. The rules that are working are green colored, and they are enabled. Let's look at just one of these. If we'd like to look at uh, network discovery, we'll, we'll double click one of these and see what it's like. You can see that this is a predefined rule. Some of its properties cannot be modified. I'll show you how to build some of your own rules in just a bit. This shows us a lot of different tabs and options as well. We can see what programs and services this is referring to. We can see what computers are we are allowing or disallowing this. We can have exceptions based on certain computers. The protocols and ports that are used for this particular rule. The scope, meaning what IP addresses on the local and remote side are associated with this particular rule if we want to set a scope that way. The advanced options, referring to the profiles, the interfaces, and edge traversal, which is our network address translation, our router address translation functionality. And of course, the users. We are allowing or disallowing certain users to be able to use this application on this inbound rule to our computer. So you can see, even though I can't change a lot of these because this is a built-in rule, this applies to all of the different rules we might be using. So if we were to build our own inbound rule, we can change and, and modify any of these settings to really be based on what application we're using. What a difference from the Windows firewall that we were just looking at where it had an application name, do we allow it? We didn't have a lot of these different properties and configurations in here. So you can start to see a lot more to configure in the advanced security of this Windows firewall, but it gives us a lot more control over what's allowed and what's not allowed into our computer. 
Let's build a new rule. I'm simply going to, on the right-hand menu, choose New Rule as this action. And it gives us this great wizard to step through. We can set up a new rule that's a program, one that is a port number, one that is predefined. We've already seen a number of these predefined options already in our windows. Or we can create a custom rule. Now, the program rule is very simple. We're simply specifying an executable, and that's how it's going to apply that rule. A much broader rule is one by port number. People traditionally think of firewalls as having these port numbers. And this would allow us to open or close an entire port number regardless of the application in use, probably not one that we would want to use all the time, something that would only be used if there was no other way to do it. But let's look at custom rule, because I think this is going to give us a lot of those different options we were just looking at. We can specify that this rule is going to apply to all programs or a very specific program or or a specific service. Obviously, the services that we're using in our service view, we can have applied to a particular rule. So if you went to your, your control panel, your administrative tools, and you looked at your services, that's what this is applying to. Since we have things that are going to run as services and others that are going to run as applications, we need to be able to configure those in this setting as well. And we're going to say this rule is going to apply to everything. We can then specify protocols or port numbers. You could say that this is an IP protocol call a TCP protocol, an ICMP protocol, and really specify how we would like to use these. Or we could specify certain port numbers. Let's choose TCP. We can specify certain ports and even list them out into this view. And same thing for the remote address, since each the source and the address both have port numbers. We can either specify one or both of those if we would like to. Under the scope view, let's just click Next here, we can choose what IP addresses this rule applies to. You're now starting to see the breakdown of how you'd build a rule and how it applies back to a number of those tabs we were looking at earlier. So we have a scope of local and remote IP addresses that this particular rule would apply to. We can also address the action. Do we allow it in this rule? If we have this happening, do we allow it if it's running over an IPsec secured encrypted connection? Or do we block it? If we ever see this coming through, just completely stop any of that traffic from coming through. We can also apply when this rule will take effect. Do we want it to be when it's on the corporate domain network? Do we want this rule whenever we're on a private network to be in place? Or when we connect to a public network? So we can already define these network locations right here as part of the rule itself. A lot of control there. And lastly, we can give it a name. So this rule might be our test rule number one. And we can add a description into this rule as well that we'd be able to see. And then it's going to apply it into the view. And there's right at the top our test rule number one and exactly how we set that up. Again, a lot of configuration options, but look at the control we got. And we're certainly going to be able to build some very, very specific inbound and outbound rules based on all of these different parameters that we have. Connection security rules, we'll click on this. And let's add a new connection security rule. And we can build a security based on isolation, authentication exceptions, server to server rules, tunneled rules, or to create a custom rule itself. So this allows us to make sure that our computer can only use certain applications if we really do have an encrypted tunnel to another location. If this network link is not secure, don't allow the application to flow. You've got a lot of control here in exactly what computers you're communicating to, very similar to what we were looking at before. Let's build a custom rule so you can see this. What computers are in point one? What computers are in point two? What uh, we would like uh, to be the authentication between those two. Do we want to request authentication, require authentication, and request authentication for outbound, require authentication for inbound and outbound, or don't authenticate at all? So we can specify which side of the connection is going to be secure or not when we build out this particular rule. We can also decide the method that we'd like to use for the authentication. Maybe this should be computer and user using something called Kerberos v5. Maybe just the computer. Or maybe, maybe ourselves, we would like to specify the authentication method. We're obviously getting into very, very detailed encryption and configuration settings for these encrypted tunnels. But you can see you've got a lot of options in here that you could set associated with these encryption keys and these methods for setting up these private encrypted connections between computers. We can also specify, let's just choose the default here so I can get you to the next window. We can specify ports and protocols, very similar to the rules that we were building on our inbound and outbound rules, the profile that will be used when these rules are applied. And lastly, the name of the rule itself. This will be our test 
connection rule. So we can specify that. And now we've built that test connection rule into our connection security views. This allows us to create some very specific rules that are going to be for these encrypted sessions. And we can even specify, as you've seen here, exactly what level of security we want to have associated with that application as it's flowing over that encrypted link. When you're working with the firewall, you may also run into situations where you're not quite certain exactly what's going on. You've got an application that should be working. The application isn't working, and you're wondering if your Windows firewall is really creating the problem. So there is a monitoring view here as well where you could see the status of the firewall. You can look at the general settings of how traffic is flowing or dropped based on the settings. And you can also see logging settings are in here as well. It's going to decide, are we going to log information in here on this connection? And this allows us to set up logging, perform that function, and see if it was the firewall that created that issue, not allowing or allowing that traffic to flow. Let's see what we've learned about our Windows firewall. Our first question, which rule type allows you to build firewall policies by port number? If you recall, there was one specific kind of Windows firewall that allowed us to use port number as one of those options in a firewall rule, and that was the Windows firewall with advanced security. The next question, what link provides access to Windows firewall with advanced security from the Windows firewall main screen? If you recall, there was a link there, and that link was the Advanced Settings link. And our last question, what kind of Windows Firewall with Advanced Settings rule allows you to set a policy that only applies to certain computers? That's a very specific rule that would only apply to certain machines. And that's when you're building a custom rule and adding a scope parameter into that. That covers our requirements for our Windows 7 firewall. We are now able to configure rules for multiple profiles, allow or disallow an application, look at network profile specific rules, configure notifications, and look at authenticated exceptions and how we can modify some of those rules both over our wide open links and our encrypted connections through our Windows 7 computer. If you'd like to see any of our additional Microsoft Windows 7 videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or you'd like to send me a message, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.